Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to be installing a WordPress on our Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we're going to be hosting this website to the outside world from within our own network. So um, this is handy if you want to, you don't want to be paying a hosting fee every month to um, a hosting company when you can just be hosting your own small website from your own house. There's no need, no need to you know, have that extra cost. So um, there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of with hosting your own website. Um, also on the Raspberry Pi 4 is the hardware is obviously, you know, not as good as a server host, you know, a hardware would be. Um, there could be some limitations there in your network connection to so simultaneous connections coming in and out. You need to make sure that um, your web, you know, that if you've got decent internet, you need to make sure that you have a decent internet connection so that you can um, establish incoming and outcoming um, connections. So um, I've never actually run my own website from um, my Raspberry Pi 4. So once I install this website, I think I'm going to keep it and do some tests. So I'll probably have a later episode showing you um, what my results were from that and just basically how much we can maybe push the website and how much traffic we can maybe get to coming in and out of it to um, to see what we can actually get out of the Raspberry Pi 4. So that would be interesting. So moving on today, so what the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a Cloudflare domain. So we need to go to our browser and log into our Cloudflare account and click on the DNS settings. And once in there, we need to create a C name. So we're going to click add record and then we're going to select C name. And this is basically our subdomain that we're going to need for our website. Now, obviously, you might not want a subdomain for your website. So you could, um, you know, you could direct your, your, your main IP, you know, your main uh, domain name to your service. You could just not use a subdomain um, if you were just wanting to leak straight direct from that um, domain name straight to your WordPress website, which is common practice, really. But for, for, for this, for this basically what I'm doing now, I'm just going to use a subdomain called WordPress. So, and then our target is always at, and then we're going to turn off this proxy setting here to DNS only, and then we're going to click save. Okay, so now that's been created, um, we have DNS only written here. So that's what we want for now until we set up our Nginx proxy manager link. And then once we've got them linked up, going to the correct port, then we can re-enable that to proxy. So basically that will mask our IP address as we have done in previous episodes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head to our Open Media Vault. And we're going to go down to our shared folders. And we're just going to make sure that if you guys haven't watched my previous episodes, which I recommend you do, if you haven't, then we should have you should have a app data folder installed here um, to whatever external device that you're using. So I, I'm using a USB um, Blue Drive. It's a Western Digital Drive. I'm just using that to host my containers. So um, you guys create yourself an app data folder. I like to keep them all in one place so it's, it's easy to move them to different devices if you ever want to move to a different server or upgrade your hardware it's easier to move them around and then reconnect them afterwards. So anyway, um, updated folder is created. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move to Portainer and we're going to come in here and I have created a stack. I've used the official WordPress image and I've managed to get a um, Maria database through Linux server. Uh, Linux server.io is, um, you know, obviously very good for um, Raspberry Pi imaging. I mean, they do a lot of work on that and that, you know, kudos to them, big respect. Um, I use them quite a lot for a lot of my images. Um, so I've just basically linked, because um, obviously the, the official WordPress um, database that they were asking you to use, the Maria database, it wasn't compatible with the ARM processor on the Raspberry Pi 4. So this one is. So this is compatible with ARM devices. So I've kind of hacked this together and it works fine. I've tested it. So um, we're going to copy and paste this stack from here. If you guys want a copy of this stack, in the link description below, you'll find a link to our blog page and you will find the Docker Compose stack here and you can just copy and paste this like we are doing. So I'm going to copy this from the notepad here and I'm going to come across to our stacks and I'm going to click add stack and then we're going to call the stack WordPress. Uh, I'm going to paste that in here. Right, so now we just need to edit a few fields. So going down the line here, we are using the official WordPress image. It's what we want. Uh, we want it to restart always. So if the server reboots, it will restart the container. Uh, the external port is 8383. We've changed it to that because we're obviously using port 8080. So what we will need to do with this external port here is we will link that later on in Nginx Proxy Manager. So just remember that port number. 
because we're going to need it. Um, we're using a 1001 and 100 as our PUID and our PGID. Um, this is for our user one account. In previous episodes, I showed you how to get that. So I'm just going to briefly do it now to anyone new who's not watched our previous episodes. So we're going to, we're using Linux today. Um, the reason why is a few people have asked us to have larger font text so they can see it on smaller devices. So we are doing that going forward. So we're going to be using Linux instead of Windows. So we're going to open up a terminal window in Linux and we're going to connect using SSH. We've changed our port to 1984 and we're using user one and then our IP address of our Pi, which is 192.168.2.5. Going to put in our password. Could be wrong. I've got stubby fingers. No, that's fine. So um, we're going to clear that out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create two folders, uh, one called WordPress, one called WordPress DB. And this is where we're going to store our Docker container files. Uh, so we're going to go to our serve folder, so CD SRV. And then we're going to go into our dev, disk UID, and it's the 661, that's our blue drive. Okay, so now you can see if we ls out to list everything that's in our directory, you can see that we have an app data folder. So we're going to go into that. And you can see our previous containers that we've created during this course. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create two folders. So we're going to go make directory. And we're going to call it WordPress. And then we're going to press up. If you press up, it will show the last command that you wrote in the terminal window. So then we just need to put DB on the end. And then press enter. And if we ls them out to list out and use the tac la, which will give us all the permissions as well, we can see that we have two folders here, new and created. Uh, sorry, here they are. Two new folders created under the user, user one, users account. So that's exactly what we want now. So now that we've got our stack in here, um, we're going to Basically, we need to know the paths to these new folders that we've created. So we're going to go back into where we were now. And we're going to CD into our WordPress folder. And then we're going to press PWD to print working directory. That's going to give us the full absolute path, which we can copy from there. And now we can paste into here. OK, so now moving down the line. This just links the database so that it can interact and it, it, it may make it work basically. Without this links thing, it doesn't work. So I've had to put that in. Um, there's the image that we're using from linuxserver.io, which is the Maria database. We're using the same PUID and PGID. And there's a slightly different schema format here, which is fine. Um, what I'm going to do for, for just for this um, exercise that I'm showing you now, I'll change all these details later on. I'll come back in and I'll recreate the WordPress website. I'm just going to leave these as default values. Um, I would recommend that you change these to secure password. And I would even change the username and the database to be different too. Um, I wouldn't use any kind of you know um, special characters or anything in the password because sometimes databases can be a bit funny with that. So I'd leave that out. So moving down the line, we're going to come down to where it says volumes under our Maria database. And this is our WordPress DB file uh, folder, sorry. So we need to find out what the path is for that. So we're going to come CD, double tack, which will take you up one route. Uh, LS, so you can see our WordPress folder is there. We're going to go into the WordPress DB folder. CD, WordPress DB. And then we're in there now. And then we just have to go PWD, print the working directory, and copy that absolute path. And then we're going to paste it right here. OK, so we've got both folder locations put in there. And we've edited all the fields that we need to. Um, the, as usual, SQL database will be on port 3306 um, internally. So that's how we're going to communicate with our WordPress instance. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down the page and we're going to click on deploy the stack. This may take a little while. You might want to go get a cup of tea and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, now that's finished. If you click on containers, you can see that we now have a WordPress um, container and we have a WordPress DB container. Okay, so we're going to check the logs just to make sure everything's gone through okay. So on the database, see that everything's fine. That's okay. It's all up and running where we want it to be. 
and we're going to look under WordPress and under logs. Now you'll see some connection refused errors, that's fine. It all works fine at the end. As long as you see this foreground Apache means we're ready to go with the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Nginx Proxy Manager and we're going to create a new proxy host. So click on proxy and then we're going to click on add proxy host and we're going to use the domain which is our subdomain that we've just created before with um, Cloudflare which is WordPress dot addicted to tech dot net. So WordPress dot addicted to tech dot net. And so the IP address is 192.168.2.5. So that's your PI IP address you put in there. And we're using port 8383. We want to block common exploits and we want to click on SSL, we want to click on request a new SSL certificate, we're going to click on force SSL and HTTP2 support and we're going to click on I agree to the let's encrypt terms of service and then once we've clicked all that we're going to click on save. Let's wait for this to finish and that's finished. We're just going to go back in again. As I said, there is a little bit of a bug with um, Nginx Proxy Manager. For some reason, you have to come back into the SSL and make sure you put them both on again and click Save. So if we go back in again as a third time, just to double check, triple check, click on SSL, you can see that they're all configured correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this WordPress and this should take us to our installation. There you are. So now we're going to click on English United States, even though we're in UK, I'm in United Kingdom, but there's no option for United Kingdom, so United States is fine. Um, site title, so we're going to call this um, Addicted to Tech, username Addicted to Tech, be nice and original. And then password, we're just going to put... <laughs> Addicted to tech, and we're going to put one and then confirm weak pa password. That's fine. Your email admin at addicted to tech.net, and we're going to discourage search engines for now. And then we're going to click install WordPress. So this will just take a few moments to install and you should be greeted by the login page, which is the admin login page. And as you can see up here as well, our SSL certificate has been installed from Let's Encrypt. So we're, full, we're fully set up really for a website and then we're going to click login. So it's addicted to tech and then our password and then login. And as you can see, we have a WordPress instance. And if you click on up here and you click visit site, this is our this is our new website, which is hosted fully on our own network and served to the outside world with an SSL certificate. Now, it's just one more step we've got to do to make sure that this proxy is working correctly. We need to go back to our Cloudflare instance, and under our C name where we've we've created WordPress, we need to click on where it says DNS only and then click this little cloud here to turn it to proxied and then we're going to click save and then what you're going to do now is you come back to your website and you refresh and you'll see that everything is set up so in a few previous episodes I've told you about using the proxied setting just to go into a little bit more detail how it protects you is um, basically this IP address here which is blurred out you can't see that is given to me by my internet service provider. So if anyone looks up that IP address, they are actually looking at my whole network. Basically, it's the point of where my network connects to. So that can be opened up to attacks. Anyone can attack my network, attack my router, and it's, it's quite unsafe. So what this does is anyone does a reverse DNS lookup, they're not going to see my IP. What they're going to see is Cloudflare's IPs. Um, so it just basically gives you an extra layer of protection. So if I actually pull up a... Um, a new terminal window right here and we're going to zoom in a little bit 
Let's zoom in maybe three. Okay. So if we do a NS lookup, okay, on addicted to tech dot net. Okay, what you're gonna see coming back, okay, is all these IPs here, they are Cloudflare's IPs. They are not connected to my local network. And there's a couple of um, IP version 6 IPs there and a couple of IP version 4s. None of these are connected to my actual local network. So after leaving it for a little while and coming back and checking our WordPress instance, I was greeted with this error here, uh, which says that the page isn't redirecting properly. So there's one way of fixing this redirect loop, basically, that keeps happening, and it's all to do with, if you go into Cloudflare and into SSL TLS, and then in here, change from flexible to full. So once you do that, it will stop this, um, basically, redirect loop that keeps happening. So if we go back to our WordPress website now and try again, our WordPress website will work again. So if you come across that problem, that's all you've got to do to fix it. If you guys have liked our episode today, if you could give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and click on the notification bell. We have affiliate links on our website as well as in the comments below. If you guys want to purchase anything from Amazon regarding Raspberry Pi, they're all in there. These are recommended products that we've searched out and made sure are compatible with our whole um, series so they, we, we can guarantee that they're going to work properly. If you guys use our links, we get a little bit of commission for using them. It doesn't cost you any extra. Thank you all if you use them. So this concludes today's episode. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.